Welcome. This is 49J2 and this is a section on redrawing simple circuits. So this is going to be conceptual in nature but I think it's quite important. Um, the same circuit can be drawn in many ways. It's useful to be able to redraw a circuit in a standard form. Most often components are located on vertical wires. So for example, you might sketch something like this, especially when you're first beginning, and it's very hard to analyze. So what people get into the habit of doing is they tend to use vertical wires and they put the components on vertical wires when they can. And so I have my battery here, and then you see, um, I'm gonna do this at that point there, um, well, I can stretch these wires. So think of it like a piece of elastic. I took, I took that wire and I made it vertical. And then I took this point and I just stretched it. And so now I come down and I go B and E. And I'm not back to the bottom of my battery. I have to go around the corner and do A. So I have my B, E and A. But from this point here, which is that point there. I also have a C connected. So again, just go over a little bit and then put your C in. And then your C leads on to a D and an F, a D and an F. But now this point here, let's call it uh, squiggly like that. That point there is that point there. And it's above the A. It's not below the A. On this piece of wire, we go through the A and then we reach this point. So we come along the wire and we go through the A and we reach that point. So these are equivalent. Oh, and then the other thing is, because the G and the H wire don't connect to anything, they're not really part of the circuit. They're just dead ends. They're just like, they're not playing an active part. They've got to be in loops. So this, which is, I think, quite complicated, becomes this, which especially with practice, becomes uh, easy to recognize parallel bits, series bits, and what's going on. And um, the, the voltage that you create here as an EMF, you are spending here. And that just makes sense. That just makes it much easier to analyze. So here's an example. Uh, which circuit is equivalent? And let's let's argue these guys out. Um, well, I put my uh, um, battery there, and then if I come down this piece of wire, my D is there, and then I come down and I have my H and my I, so my H and my I goes there. Um, if I go from the top of the battery I come to a junction so I have a junction here which is the same as that junction there and then coming down from that junction I have an E and an F an E and an F and at the bottom of the F it joins up with the I just like here so this all looks pretty good so far and then in parallel to the E and the F in parallel to the E and the F, I have an A and then a B and then a G. So I have an A and a B and a G. And then, ooh, well, I gotta say, this C is not connected even to the right place. The C, if you wanted, you'd put here. But it's dead ending, so no one cares about it. It's like, forget it. So this is not good. It's, it's not an equivalent uh, circuit. Um, if I look at the next possibility, I have coming down here, I have my D, my H, and my I, my D, my H, and my I, and then going around the other loop in parallel, I have an E and an F, I have an E and an F. I have a line, a, a wire going from below the D and above the H, all way across to be between the E and the F which I've got here which is nice and then I have a parallel combination to the E and the F it's A, B and G A, B and G and that looks pretty good to me actually 
So what about this next one? What's wrong with that? Well, I have the D, the H, and the I. And then in parallel with those, I have an E and an F. And then in parallel with those, I have an A, a B, and a G. So this looks pretty good. Oh, but whereas I actually have a, a Y which goes from between the D and the H to be between the E and the F, I have it between the E and the F to between the B and the G. So that's not good either. So B is the best answer on this one. <clears throat> so uh, it might seem like that's not mathematical and it's not. And you would be hard pressed to find a published schematic diagram that looks like that. But certainly if you're looking through people's notes, you might see something that looks like that. And when you're designing something, you might draw something like that. So it's a good idea to practice just getting it into a more standard form. There's no, as far as I'm aware, there's no absolute standard, but there's, there's common patterns that people use. And there we have it.